In this video, we review the van der Waals equation of state. In the last couple of videos, we have seen first the ideal gas equation of state, which is right here, and then we have seen that uh, there's uh, breakdowns to that ideal gas equation of state that happen when you start to experience interactions between the gas particles. Now, you can break down that ideal gas again when the uh, interactions with the particles start to be important, and you can do that by applying pressure. Now, when you apply pressure, what happens is that the distance between particles starts to decrease, and initially, those particles uh, are within a range where they can attract each other, okay? So that means that uh, the gas is going to be easier to compress uh, than, than if those attractions were not there, but if you continue to uh, increase the pressure, then those gas particles are gonna be really close to each other such that they're going to be repelling each other and that's going to make the gas more difficult to compress than if the repulsions were not there. Okay, so, so this graph shows you exactly that in the case of nitrogen, where uh, at low pressures you have ideal behavior, but if you increase the pressure, then you have the attractions at, uh, are important in this range of pressure, but if you increase the pressure a lot, the repulsions take over. Now the question is, are there equations that, are, uh, that transcend this ideal gas equation of state and allow us to study gases not only under ideal gas conditions but also at higher pressures where breakdowns of ideality are important? The answer is yes and, and the first one or, or one of the, the more important ones that uh, are available is the Van der Waals equation of state. For this work again uh, Van der Waals got the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1910. Okay so this is really a uh, serious work. Right, so what uh, uh, Van der Waals proposed was a really uh, straightforward manipulation of the ideal gas equation of state, but uh, in a way that uh, tries to incorporate both attractions and repulsions, which ultimately are connected to the available volume to the particles. Right, so the Van der Waals equation of state is again a very simple modification of this that is just like that. Okay, uh, plus a n squared over v squared v minus n b equal to n r t. Right. So notice that the terms of the equation are very similar. The right, right hand side is exactly the same and in the left hand side you have pressures and volumes but they are corrected by some terms that we have to explain. Okay, Here you have just number of moles squared, volume squared, that is number of moles squared and then here you have two new constants, which are the A and B constants, and those depend on the gases, okay? So they're different for each gas. Now, uh, uh, how does this equation incorporate uh, attractions and repulsions? Okay, so this term that you have right here, that term codes for attractions, and we're going to explain why. And this term right here codes for repulsions. Okay, great. So to uh, uh, show how this, this takes place, right, we're going to solve that ideal gas van der Waals equation of state for pressure. If we solve for pressure, what you have is that this is equal to nRT over V minus N, and then this lowercase v letter, okay, which again is a constant specific to its gas, and then minus another constant which is specific to its gas, N squared V squared. All right, so again, we're saying that this term accounts for uh, attractions and that term accounts for repulsions. Now, the A and B constants are always positive. They're never negative. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, notice that uh, uh, this term accounts for uh, attractions because what happens is that if this term is very large, okay, what happens is that the pressure that you get would be less than the ideal pressure. Okay, so again, if you remove that term, and this term, that is the ideal gas equation of state, but if you make that term sizable, really large, then you get a lower pressure than uh, you would if that term was not there. So, okay, that, that is attractions. Okay, why is that attractions? Look, this is very easy to, uh, to see, and I'm going to try to explain that to you. Let's think of a gas in a container, and the pressure uh, of the gas particles on the container is caused when these gas particles are colliding 
with the walls of the container, right? That's what gives uh, the uh, rise to pressure. Okay, so that gas is actually going to be colliding maybe uh, that way with the container, and it's that collision that is causing the pressure. Now, if there's no interactions with the neighbors, then uh, uh, there will be some frequency of collisions, maybe 10 collisions per second or, or whatever number that is, and then uh, there will be some momentum to that collision, right? So, so some, uh, that is related to the force with which uh, that gas particle is colliding with the wall. But if now you turn on attractions between this particle that is colliding with the wall and the neighbors, like this one and like that one, right? So if those are attracting each other, what's going to happen is that the frequency of collisions with the wall will go down. Right? Uh, fewer molecules will be able to collide with the wall because they are being held back by neighbor molecules through attractions. And then of those collisions, of those particles that are able to collide with the wall, right, the fact that you have something pulling back on you is going to mean that the momentum uh, or the force with which you're colliding on that wall will be slower or, or lower. Right? So what that means is that, well, because you have fewer collisions with the wall, and those collisions are less violent when you have those neighbors attracting you, pulling back from you, then what it means is that the pressure is lower. Okay, so that is why we know that that term encodes for uh, attraction. Now, what about the other term, repulsion? This one. All right, so uh, this, this term comes from, uh, from repulsion from the following. Okay, so uh, in essence, a, a way to perhaps understand this is to just consider that this term that you have right there or right here, that is the volume available for the particles to move in. Okay, so uh, uh, that is the volume available for the particles to move in. Well, if that's the case, then what, what, what that, that means is that this V must be the volume of the container, okay? And this volume is, uh, or this term, is the volume occupied by the particles them themselves, right? So you have uh, that V, capital V, will be the volume of the container, right? So the volume of this space. But then NB will be the sum of the volume occupied by the particles, right? So the difference between those two is the volume uh, through which those, those particles can move. Okay, great. So notice that in the ideal gas equation state we don't have any such thing because we're assuming that those particles are just point masses, right? They do not occupy any volume. So the volume of the container and the volume available for those particles to move in is exactly the same, okay? But now what we're actually doing is, is the, uh, the following, right? So we're saying, well, now uh, we go from a situation that is like this, where the volume of the particles is negligible, to a situation where you actually have that, that might actually have some actual volume. So when you turn on that volume, notice that what happens now is that those particles are going to repel each other. Right, uh, and that is going to give rise to an increase in pressure. That's what the term is doing for you. Okay, notice that if this term starts to be really large, okay, uh, then what happens here is that this denominator will be small, or smaller than if uh, the ideal case, and if the denominator is small, then this term will be pretty large and the pressure goes up. Okay, the pressure goes up when you have that those gases are repelling each other and colliding with the walls of the container uh, with much more momentum and higher frequency than they would otherwise. Okay, so that's kind of an explanation for the, this Van der Waals equation of state and how we can actually recover this type of behavior and, and the equation does reasonably well in capturing these uh, both the attractions and the repulsion for repulsions for many gases. All right, and again, it's kind of the, the first uh, equation that was devised in order to be able to account for non-ideality in reality, uh, uh, this equation also has uh, uh, pitfalls, right? It's not perfect either, either way, but it's kind of uh, a very nice one because it allows you to see how microscopic behavior, which is the interactions between the particles, manifest in a macroscopic phenomenon such as something uh, that you can measure, like a compression factor or a pressure or a volume. Okay, so to wrap things up, in this video, we have seen the Van der Waals equation of state, which is kind of one of the earlier and simplest uh, methods to take into consideration deviations from ideality in gases.